Hey, it's Harker from Play. Today I'm going to show you how you can add a native navigation bar to your projects in Play. So with the page selected, we're going to go over to the Attributes panels to the Navigation panel. And the first property here is Navigation Bar. So I'm just going to flip that on. And when I do that, you'll see that I now have a native navigation bar added to my page. And the title right now matches the title of the page in Play. So that's navbar, and you can see right here it says navbar. But if I want to change that, I can go over to the page element settings and I can type in a new page title. So now I have all of that set up, and now we're going to customize the navbar itself. So in this pop up that's appeared, this is where all of the properties will live. So the first one is bar style. There's two different bar styles that you can use for your navigation bar. First is large, so it looks like this. The the title is bigger and it's on the left side, and then you have small where the title is smaller and it's in the center. You can also set it to auto, and this will inherit whatever the previous page had. So if the previous page had a large nav bar, this page will also have a large nav bar. Next are the bar items. So this is what's going to appear on the left and right side of your navigation bar. And it's very easy to add them. So you just press on the plus side on either the left bar items or on the right bar items. And then you can choose if you want to add a custom symbol or text. If you want to add a word, so this is maybe done. So if I add done, it's going to add the word done. You can also add a symbol. So that's this second set down here. So these words uh, are, these words have an associated symbol. So if I do search, you'll see the looking class search symbol will be added. And then lastly, you also have spacers. So if I want to add a little bit of extra gap in between any of the other bar items, you can do that using spacers here. I already have the bar items that I want set up. I have edit, and so this is a system word. I also have a custom one set up here. So I have this call button, and I can search through any of plays or any of Apple's SF symbols, and I can add that. I can also type in a word. So now this bar item has both the symbol and the word. You can also change the color. So right now it's blue, but I can make it purple instead or any color that I'd like. Also, if I go back up to the top, there's this default option and I'll show you how to set the default for all of the different bar items in just a second. And then lastly, I have this system that um, I have the system symbol. And if I want to rearrange any of the bar items, I can just drag and drop. Next, we have enable back. So when this is turned on, it means that what page is going to have a back button and the bottom, the one below that is show title on subpage. So this fits in with the enable back button. So when the back button is there, it's also going to say the name of this page. So for example, let's say from here, we navigated to a settings page. On the settings page, there will be a back button that says back chats. And when you tap that, it will use a back to page or dismiss page action to take you back to this chats page. Next, we have prompt, and this is a way to add a little bit of extra text to the top of your nav bar. So in our chats page, maybe we want to say text a friend. And when that's added, you'll see it lives right up there. Next, we have hide nav bar. So there's several options, and when you click on the right side, you'll have this small popover, and you can choose if you want to hide the nav bar when you tap on the page when you scroll on the page or when you use a keyboard or, or when you open a text field and the keyboard appears. So let me show you what happens when I turn on scroll on. So as I'm scrolling down my page, you'll see that the chat disappeared. And when I start scrolling the other way, the chat reappears. And when I have on scroll turned off, you'll see that the chat or the nav bar does not actually disappear. It just changes natively from large to small style. These bottom two properties are how you'll change the appearance. So you have a default appearance, which is how your navbar will look when you have not scrolled down the page. And you also have a scrolled appearance, which is how your navbar will look when you have scrolled down the page. So for the default appearance, well, for both of these, you'll click on the right side and a pop-up will appear. You'll be able to adjust the blur. You can use all of the system blurs or the blurs that we provided. You can do default, you can have no blur. You can also turn the shadow off or have it turned back on. That's the little line that shows here. You also have the tint, and this is going to change the color of all of the nav bar items. So remember earlier when I said you could change the color of this phone button and it would override the default? This is how you change the default. So when we have it set to blue by default and maybe I want it to be mint, you can see all of them change and you can continue to adjust those. Next we have bar fill. So this will change the background of the entire bar. Looks just so great. So we'll 
delete that. And lastly, we have the title fill, which will change the color of the title. So you can adjust that to your liking. And that is the appearance for your nav bar. I also wanna call attention to the navigation bar visibility property that's right below the navigation bar property in the navigation panel. So what this does is when you have a navigation bar turned on, that means that you have created a navigation bar. It exists on this page. So you have the option to either have it be auto, so it's going to inherit from the previous page whether the navigation bar is showing by default or not, or you can choose to show it on your page. So it'll show by default. When the nav bar is turned off, it means that you don't have a nav bar on this page. So your options are to either do auto, so again, it'll inherit from the previous page, and it'll either inherit the actual navigation bar from the previous page, or it'll inherit that there's no navigation bar. Or you can just choose hide, and that means no matter what the previous page had, there's not gonna be a navigation bar on this page. And that's how you create a native nav bar in play. Thanks so much for watching this video.